The Spice is Right, today on Let's Cook. Hi, welcome to The Spice is Right, today on Let's Cook. Now, when we're talking about spices, you know, a spice can be, it can be a root, it can be a seed, it can be a nut, it can be a bark. That's what spice is all about. And, and when, when you make something spicier, you're using spice, usually a little less is better. And so today we have a couple of different items that we're going to make that are really nice. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a braised short rib hoagie or grinder or submarine um, based on where you are in a country you might call it a different thing uh, and we're making that with a spicy slaw additionally I'm going to take some chorizo which is spicy sausage with some clams and seared shrimp and serve that over fettuccine I know you're going to like that so we have some real nice spicy things going on today in this segment however the first thing we have to do to braise the short ribs is I have to sear them. So what I'm going to do right now is I've already started to heat my pan here. Into my pan here, I'm going to put just a little bit of oil. Now, before I put the ribs into the oil here, a couple of things. One, these are what the short ribs look like. And you can see when we look at the short ribs here, you see all that marbling in there. Great flavor in that marbling. The marbling is a white flex that's intramuscular fat. A lot of connective tissue here, a lot of gelatin, very, very flavorful piece of meat. So all I'm going to do with these is season these with salt and pepper on both sides, and then I'm going to sear them off. When you're searing something off, the pan has got to be very hot to do this. Now, if you look in the bottom of my pan here, you can see that it's already starting to smoke. I'm going to take my ribs now and just drop them in the pan, and we're going to brown them. When you're browning ribs or you're searing ribs, it's very important that you leave them alone. Just need to let them really brown up. And what that browning will do when I sear the meat here is it's actually creating color and flavor to go with the ribs. The caramelization is actually a browning of the sugar. It's very important. So I'm going to continue to let these sear off. We're gonna get these nice and brown. We're gonna take a little break. And then when we come back, I'll show you how we take these braised short ribs and make a delicious grinder, whole gear heel to go with it. Don't go anywhere. It's the spice is right today and let's go. Hi, welcome back to the spices. Uh, excuse me, the spice is right today on let's cook. Look at our ribs here. Now we sear them off. See the great color we have on on the ribs. Now our next step is going to be to get our sauce going to braise these in. So we're just going to remove our ribs. Let the pan stay nice and hot, With the pan should stay nice and hot. Now right here on the cutting board, I have three different onions. I have uh, some spring onions or some scallions. I have some leek or white onion. Any of these onions will work in this. And all I'm going to do is roughly chop these onions. Because during the braising process, these onions are really going to disintegrate quite a bit. So I'll just cut my leeks down or the white onion or the scallion. Any of these will work in this, uh, particular item. Oh, there's one thing I need to show you here. My, see this leek right here? A lot of times when you buy leeks right here, this is an immature leek where the inside here is still very tight. Uh, it hasn't uh, properly grown. So if you go to the market and the leek is really smaller, you, you start to see something like this in the leek. Try and stay away from those leeks, even though these are fine for braising, but they're not really good for a salad or anything like that. So I'll just take and I'll drop my onions right into the pan here. Along with the onions now, we'll put a couple of cloves of garlic in there. Also, we don't really have to brown these vegetables. I don't want to brown the garlic. You can if you want, more color. A little bit of ketchup in there. Then we're going to take a little bit of red wine. Use a nice red wine when you're doing that. A little bit of soy sauce here. That'll work well. And then we'll just put in a little bit of stock as well. So we get a little bit of stock in there too. We're going to bring this up to a simmer now. And you can do this on the stove top or in the oven, but we return our ribs. Now you'll notice that my liquid, once I have my ribs in here, the liquid is coming about halfway up my ribs. That's what it should do once when I start to braise these. Should start to come about halfway up. Do this in the oven at 350 degrees 
or even on the stove top at a very gentle simmer. This is what they look like when they're done. So these, I've already braised these. I have this wonderful liquid here and you can see, see the difference here. Look how the bone has really shrunk away from the rib. You see that there? I'll bring one of these over so you can actually see the difference. This is before right here and this is after. And you can see how that bone really shrinks away. The meat is nice and tender. You're going to have great flavor there. And a, a good way of doing this is to take this, make this the day before you're going to use it. Put it in the refrigerator just like this, you know, with all the liquid and everything else. All the fat will come to the surface. When it comes to the surface, you can just scrape that excess fat away. Now, what we do with these is we'll now take these. Oh, you can see that bone just came off right there. What we do with these now is we just take these now. And with our hands, well, this has a, this is a little tough right here where it's right next to the bone here. So we'll take that off. But with our hands or with a knife, you just pull this meat apart. All you have to do is just pull the meat apart and you put it back in this in the liquid and you allow it to cook even more. So once you get it off the bones, you put it back in the liquid. This is what it ends up looking like right here. See how this looks right here where we shredded this? Looks terrific, doesn't it? We reduce the sauce down as well. Nothing gets strained, just goes right in there. This is delicious and this will work with pork. It'll work with chicken. Um, won't work with fish, but pork and beef, it's excellent with. And again, if you'd like a little bit more spice in there, you can make it really spicy if you wanted to as well. Now, I'll show you how we make the sandwich. The way I like the sandwich, and this should, by the way, be warm. The way I like the sandwich is first I have some nice cheese here, and I'm just going to take this cheese, cut some thin slices of this white cheddar cheese. You could use Monterey Jack, provolone, any cheese will go really well with this. Nice thick slices here because now we're going to take this with our hero bread right here. Put our hero down. Now that's the other thing I, I should show you. When, when you're cutting bread, let's say you're cutting French bread, I get very nervous when I see people go like this. I think it's very dangerous. Your hand should be up like this. The knife should come this way. You should start with the knife coming into the bread and then you just pull it down this way. A serrated knife works real well doing that too. Now, next thing that I like to do, is I call this the inside out. Because what I'll do with the French bread here is I'll actually take the inside bread right here and I pull this out. You know, when you go for a hero and you say, I want, you know, I want my hero, I want my hoagie with the inside out. That's all we're doing. Now we take our wonderful shredded beef that we have right here. Let me just get my pair of tongs. Oh, here they are. Just take a little bit of this right here. Ooh, right here. Oh, this is such a good sandwich. All the flavors just come together very nicely. You can see how the onions and the garlic basically disintegrate. If I had any really large pieces of garlic in there, the whole chunks, I would go ahead and take those out too. Take this, put our cheese right here. You pop this under the broiler just to melt the cheese just a little bit. And then what I think just goes really well with this is I like to take a little bit of iceberg lettuce. I just like the, uh, the water content in the iceberg lettuce. So I take a little bit of iceberg lettuce this way. We just shred this down after we melt it. This goes right in the middle here. And we have a delicious braised short rib hoagie hero sandwich submarine, whatever you'd like to call it, out of this world. Um, we're going to take a little break right now, but then when we come up, Next, I'm making a delicious spiced seared shrimp with clams and chorizo over fettuccine. Don't go anywhere. It's definitely the Spice is Right Today on Let's Cook. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to the Spice is Right Today on Let's Cook. Now, this, this next dish that we're making over fettuccine, it's, it has great spice to it. And we're getting spice in a couple of different directions. One, I'm using this chorizo or chorizo sausage here, which is uh, has a lot of spice to it. It's, it has a nice bite to it. This is smoked, so you got that smoky, spicy flavor, delicious. I'm also using some Thai green chili paste, which you can get in your in the uh, um, eastern section of the market or in the oriental section, wherever they might have it. Um, but it has, it's green chilies that are, are, they're actually done in a mortar and pestle and it has a really nice bite to it. But to bring the flavor out of the green chili paste here, we need to saute this. Now we're also using clams. 
what I did when we were during break is I started to steam open my clams. So I have my plans right here and I'm steaming them open to get them really, uh, to, so that I don't have to wait for them in this segment so I can show you how you're done, how these are done and you can actually do this the same way at home. So my clams aren't open yet. So while I'm waiting for my clams to open up there, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these beautiful shrimp that I have right here and I'm going to put them into a bowl. And into this bowl now, I'm just going to take not all of my green chili, but a little bit of my green chili paste here with just a little bit of salt here. Also a little bit of white pepper. I'm not using black pepper in this, a little bit of white pepper. I'm going to mix this together here with just a splash of oil. Just a splash of oil here. This is going to just impart that flavor. Now, you know, um, the chilies themselves, they they can break down connective tissue. They have the capsaicin, cap, I believe I'm saying that right, is um, very good at breaking down connective tissue, but it's also good at preserving. So I don't want them to sit in there too long. I'll leave them in for a little while. They'll start to pick up that flavor on the surface so that when I go to pan sear them, they'll work. So let's put this over here. Let's see how our clams are doing right here. Okay, good, perfect. What happened now is my clams started to open up here. See how they're open there? Now the clams that did not open yet, if they don't open, I'm probably not going to use them. Now I'm just going to take this with the juice right from my clams here. Put this right back in, right in the bowl there. Now in the same pan that I steamed the clams open, I'm going to put these on the side. I don't want them overdone. We're going to take our pan now with just a little oil. I'm going to start with my onions and let them start to saute up. Along with those onions, we're going to add our green chili paste here. You're going to let this cook. You can smell the heat coming out of these, out of this world. So I want a bigger spoon here. Let the heat start to come up. Keep moving this around. Once my onions start to turn a little translucent as they are here right now, I add my shrimp. I'm going to put our shrimp in here now and let them start to cook with the green chili paste. Now to speed up the cooking of the shrimp, once they start, we just need to get them to change color just a little bit here. Okay. So once I, they start to change color like this, I'm going to turn them over. I'm going to add a little bit of white wine to this. Just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. Now we take a little bit of our chorizo. We don't, see, you can look in here. There's really no fat for me to render out of this to add flavor to my dish. But if this simmers in with the liquid with the shrimp, it's going to impart a very nice flavor. So I'll just put a little bit of this in there now too. Let that go in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my soy sauce to this too. Let that start to come up. Now, the other thing that I'm using with this is I have some fresh fettuccine here that I'm just going to drop into water here very quickly. This will take about two minutes. The water was boiling, it was salted. I'm just gonna let this come up. and This will be perfect to go with this given dish. Let's come over here, let's take a look at this now. Okay, beautiful. Now, remember when we steamed open the clams? A lot of flavor in here. So what I'm going to do is I just take that liquid from my clams, add that right to the shrimp there. So that, again, we're building some more flavors in this. The other thing that goes into this dish that I'm using is I also have some tomatoes and some parsley here, and that's going to go in at the very end. And what I did with the tomatoes is I took the tomatoes, I peeled them, and I just chopped them up. They were, they were not too seedy, so I left the seeds in. If they had a lot of seeds in there, I would go ahead and uh, remove the seeds as well. So let's get our clams over here. These are the ones that are open. These are still good. Now see this one here? started to try and open. I'm going to put it back in there, see if I can salvage it. They just might have been a few late bloomers there because we don't want to waste any of the clams. So let's see how this looks now. Oh, beautiful. Doesn't that look great? Now we're ready for our tomatoes. 
pick some of our tomatoes. We'll add our tomatoes. See how this all kind of goes in together here? We're going to add our tomatoes here. Beautiful. A lot of nice flavor going on in there. Now, I won't add any of the uh, parsley till the very end. Now, let's take our pasta here. I'm just going to bring this pasta over here, and I'm going to drain it off at the sink over here. I feel like I should be actually selling one of these, you know, because um, I see you see a lot of the infomercials on TV where they're selling that those special strainers and so forth. This was very inexpensive, worked very well. So my pasta is here, ready to go. Now the only, see now here, see what happened with my clam? This clam is good, it opened up. However, and this one's just starting to, this one is still very tightly closed. See how tightly closed that is? I'll get rid of that. And I'll also get rid of this one, which is still tightly closed. Leave this one in there, see? This one's good. All I'm going to do right now is take, put my proteins on the one side here, take a little bit of my fettuccine here, drop this on this side with a little of that liquid, and let this to continue to cook for, oh, roughly about a minute and a half to really pick up that flavor. In goes our parsley. The wine is cooked down, the onions are cooked. Now we're ready to plate this. Let's just uh, get a side towel over here. I'll bring the plate over here and I'll show you how nicely we can plate this. So this comes off. I like the fettuccine for this dish because what we can do is we can twirl the fettuccine and make a nice mound of it this way, getting that right onto the plate. Then we'll give them one, two, Three, I always go in odd. I usually never go into evens. Then we'll take a clam here, a clam there, a clam here. And of course, we'll take a little bit of our sauce. Just looking for my nice spoon that I like here. A little bit of our sauce here, right on top in the middle. Making sure that we give them the chorizo as well. This is a delicious, easy to make dish set. If you don't like clams, you could easily substitute chicken in this. If you don't like chorizo sausage, you could use Italian sausage. Very versatile dish. Let's take a little break. And then when we come back, I still have to show you how to make a wonderfully delicious spicy slaw to go with the hero we made earlier today on Let's Cook. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to The Spice is Right today on Let's Cook. Now I'm making a wonderful spicy coleslaw. In the bowl right here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sugar with some cayenne pepper. I'm going to add to this a little bit of rice wine vinegar and about a third as much olive oil. That's just to dissolve the sugar in there. So we're just going to uh, bring that right there. Beautiful. Okay, that's now that's our spicy dressing. The other thing that's going in here, we'll take a little bit of red onion here. We're going to cut the red onion down into either julienne or just very thin slices this way. Very thin because we want this to show up. So we have our red onion here. We'll use our red onion. I also have some shredded cabbage, white cabbage here. I'll put that in there. Additionally, right here, I also, I'm going to put some scallions in here that were very thinly sliced. Some chives. Now the chives, I'm going to cut them. And again, this is just going to give it a little taste treat, but I'm going to cut the chives a little big like that. I also have some finely julienned red pepper right here that I'm just going to take and cut into very small dice. And this is also going to go right into my coleslaw there. Let's get this out of the way here now. I don't want the peppers too big because um, then you're just going to overpower it. But by being nice and small that way, they're going to work well. And we just toss this together. This, of course, would be better if it marinated for a little while longer. But you see the nice, look at the colors. It looks, it's saying I'm alive. I'm alive. Now, I'll take this. We'll set this up on this plate right here. Oh, so good. Now, to give this a little bit of a different twist, I have my cucumber right here. And all I'm going to do with the cucumber here is I'm going to, in the bowl right here, peel 
some very thin slices of cucumber. Only have less than a minute left in show, so I'm going to do this quickly. But some very thin slices of cucumber here. With these, a little lemon juice, a little salt, a little pepper, a little parsley. We toss this together and we put this right in the middle of the coleslaw. So you're actually having two salads in one. The spice is definitely right, especially today on Let's Cook. Thank you so much for watching. You have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye bye for now.